everybody, it's Rain. Today's video is our third episode of Let's Spin This. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about how to spin some beautiful hand-dyed mulberry silk comb top. This is grade A mulberry silk. It is also known as Bombike's silk. And it's in comb top form. And I have dyed it a beautiful pink. It has some other multi-dimensional colors throughout, but it's mainly pink. And I will have some of this in my Etsy shop linked down below. So let's take a closer look at this fiber. So here I have opened up the fibers just a little bit. So you can see some of the differences inside of it. It is very, very fluffy and very soft. Mulberry Silk has one of the finest micron counts in the world, ranging anywhere from 10 up to about 15 to 17 microns in diameter of fineness. This is right up there with the top finest fibers in the world like Cashmere, Quivet, and Vicuna. This is about 50 grams worth right here that you're looking at. And this is what we will be spinning today. Mulberry silk is known to literally stick to everything. So be aware if you have a lot of static electricity in the air or if your hands are dry, if you have any little rough spots on your hands because it will stick and it can become a little bit of a pain if your hands are not properly moisturized and the air has that static to it. So let's take a closer look at this fiber. Now watch as I move the fiber around between my fingers and I'm really hoping that you guys can get a sense of the way this would actually feel in person and how it just floats and is very airy to touch. I'm going to place a timestamp. If you don't want to see any of the troubleshooting, you can go to this time right here just to see up close spinning of this fiber. Right here. Pull it out. Now, silk is known also to have a very long staple length. As you can see, it's already wanting to stick all over to my hand. As you can see, a very long staple length. So Now I double checked and it says that the normal average staple length for mulberry silk is a 3 to 5 inch staple length. This silk that I have is probably more like a 6 to 8 inch staple length. So do be aware that the staple length in mulberry or bombyx silk is and can be a little longer than five inches in some cases. So we are going to get our Ashford eSpinner 3, our little electric spinner, all set up and ready to spin some of this mulberry silk. And as we spin, I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques you can use and also let you know a little bit about how silk is made and the process of mulberry silk. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. So the first thing you want to do when you get some comb top is pull a little bit from each end to see which end you feel drafts the best and the easiest. Some say that this doesn't make a difference, but in certain combed top blends, it does make a difference. So I'm going to pull on each end and see which one drafts the easiest, and then that will give me an idea of which end I want to spin from. So as you could probably tell, we're not going to be spinning from this end, we're going to spin from the first end that we drafted, and I'm going to go through and pre-draft it just a little bit before I spin it to make it a little bit easier, and I will also show you a comparison of pre-drafted spinning versus not pre-drafting before you spin. So you just want to go through and gently pull your fiber and draft it out just like so, and it will slowly start to fluff out and become more of a spinnable fiber that way but it can also make it a little bit more challenging and I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit but here is the gorgeous pre-drafted fiber that we have as you can see it opens those fibers up nicely and makes it a little bit of a better consistency for some people to spin. Now personally, I don't like to pre-draft all that much. It does help in certain cases, but for my style of spinning, I feel like 
It can make it a little bit harder sometimes to get the right thickness since I like to go pretty thin with my fibers. So be sure to experiment and see what works best for you. So I thread my silk through the leader away from the knot off to the side a little bit so that it doesn't get tangled when we go to take it off. And I'm just going to slowly start to pull out a little bit of fiber and you will have a few naps here and there. Pretty much all comb tops usually have a little nip here and there and it's literally just the fibers getting a little bit tangled. That's all it is. A little bit on the outside either from the dyeing or just from handling it can become a little tangled and it will create a nip. Very simple to remove. Just pluck them off and smooth the fiber back out. So we're just slowly pulling some fiber out a little bit as we go. Make sure your hands are far enough apart so so that your staple lengths do not overlap and that your fiber will be able to draft out smoothly. So as you can see there, I pulled a little bit too much fiber out than I wanted to and that is where silk can become a little bit of a challenge. It is probably one of the slipperiest fibers to spin, especially mulberry silk. So you just have to take your time and really pull on those fibers quite a bit. Silk is the strongest natural fiber in our known world, so don't be afraid to pull on those fibers a little bit to get them to the fineness and the thickness that you want. Now I always like to show the beginning where I start spinning because you can see all the struggles that I face. Now what happened right here was that the staple length above kind of slid down onto the staple length below. So there's really no reason to go ahead and break it right there and then reconnect it if you can kind of get it to where it will stick where it needs to stay stuck and then add a little bit of twist and that usually will fix your problem. I don't know about you all, but this happens to me a lot with wool and other fibers as well. But silk is a really, really big one for having this happen just because it's so slippery and the little scales that hold the fibers together to make the yarn are so thin and small. So I got the hang of it a little bit more after that part. And I did want to show you this next part coming up. As you can see, our fibers have kind of split apart down at the bottom a little bit and they are too far apart for like a worsted style spin like the way I spin so I kind of tried to brush them up toward the fiber so that my next draft out as I was spinning would kind of pull some of those fibers in so you do have to stop and do that periodically if your silk kind of starts to fray and uh, catch that static and get pulled in different directions apart from your middle fiber supply where it would draft out from. So I wanted to show you right here this got a little bit too thick and just a little bit too unsightly for me. So we're going to fix that. We are going to untwist with our hands very far apart so that the staple length has room to untwist itself and just slowly pull and then let the twist come back in and you'll probably have to do this several times and this is for a piece that is a little bit too big a little bit too thick or if you have some little stray fibers on top like I have here this can also smooth those out as well and just like that it is perfect once again all right, here is one of those beautiful, juicy, up-close videos that you come to see from these episodes. As you can see, I let my twist go just a tad bit into my fiber supply, and that's where my, my break hand was. And you can always move it up or down. So as you can see, I broke it off there, and I did a little plyback test to check how gorgeous this yarn is going to turn out. I really tried to capture the shine in the video, but it's really hard to do as always. So let me go ahead and show you how to reconnect a single to your combed top supply. First, make sure all of the twist is completely out of your single, and then take your comb top supply and fluff out the edges just like so. And then you wanna lay it in there quite deep. As you can see, I've got it about eight to 10 inches down into the fiber. And then make sure you pinch up the top. Don't let any twist come back into the fiber. See, I'm pinching, pinching up there. And then I finally let it go right at the drafting triangle 
I went ahead and pressed my put pedal and let the twist start coming back into the fiber and it will go ahead and start grabbing what is around it and it will add twist and make your single as if it had never been broken. And now, here is what you've all been waiting for. That beautiful, up close, spinning montage where you can see the individual fibers literally being spun in front of your eyes. And hopefully, this can give you a nice, up close feel of how the silk would behave in your own hands. So this particular clip right here is a pre-drafted piece of the silk as I was spinning it and you can see uh, it was going along wonderfully nice and smooth no issues I feel like the silk finally started to behave itself after I just kind of started spinning it like any other fiber and stopped and stopped worrying so much about the slipperiness of it and the staple length and I'm showing you where my little brake hand is over there, my left hand, so you can kind of see how far back I have my hands and how far apart they are so that it makes it a nice easy spin. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about how silk is made. If you're interested in that, keep watching. So with grade A mulberry silk, it is made from the the silkworm is called Bombex Mori L, and its whole life it is fed mulberry leaves. That's where the name mulberry silk comes from. That is what produces the really strong, special type of fiber that is used to make mulberry silk. So after the little silkworms eat till their little heart's desire on mulberry leaves, they grow big enough to start to spin their cocoon. They are then harvested by the silk producers. They are put into boiling water and the cocoons are harvested. It takes around 3,000 to 2,000 cocoons to make one pound of mulberry silk. So as you can see, this is a very, very luxurious and expensive fiber. The silk is then reeled off of the cocoons in multiple strands that come together to form one single strand of the silk like you see here that I'm spinning. Then it is put through a washing process and it is turned into silk combed top or it is spun into silk yarn. So you can see why mulberry silk is the most luxurious and expensive of all of the silks. There's plenty of other silks that are like Tussa and wild caught silks that do not use such a harsh process to get the fiber itself. And those are perfectly wonderful substitutes. But like I said, mulberry is the most luxurious for that reason because the silk itself is not broken and it comes from a cocoon that has not been opened or torn apart by the moth. And I really hope this video has taught you at least one little thing and maybe fixed a couple troubleshooting issues with some of your silk spinning problems if you have them. Here is how the silk ended up looking. These are just the singles. I cannot wait to ply this with something else. I will let you guys know later on what it turns into and what we spin it with, but I have a couple ideas. Let me tell you, this week has been probably the craziest week in my entire life, but I'm excited for the future, and I hope you guys are too. I love each and every one of you, and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more. I come out with videos every week, and I'm hoping to do something special for Easter. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you next week. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Bye-bye.